It's the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight, starring the Cuban Missile Crisis. Tito Bonito. Tonight's very special guest. We have child star and off-Broadway legend, Blake McIver. And musical guest, Frankie Duop. And now, let's get ready for your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque. Tito Bonito! Hey everybody, welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. How are y'all doing today during this crazy ass times? Uh, I don't really want y'all to write an essay about it. I just wanted to know that I love you. I am here to entertain the fuck out of y'all and give you an amazing show that's going to be even better than the one that we did last week. Ooh, it's hot though. Do you mind if I take this jacket off and get a little bit more comfortable with you all? Yeah? Remember, I can't hear the audience applause. Uh, so I'm going to have to ask all of you that if you want me to see that you love what you see, put some hearts on the side right there. You can also, in the question mark box, you can uh, ask me any questions or any of our very special guests this evening. Uh, any questions throughout the show and we will try to get to them. But first, let me oh, swim in a something comfortable. Oh, yes, that makes me feel so much better, y'all. Welcome, welcome to the Tito Bonito Show, y'all. I, of course, am your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, and I am here to bring you another late night talk show kind of vibe with uh, y'all today. So we're going to find, uh, ooh, look, listen, listen, Linda. Now you know, now you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, I wanted to start off with everybody and just check in how you're doing. Yes, my hair and everything else looks on point. Uh, right now, I do want to shout out one of my favorite people in the world. And I actually uh, have a little something here to show y'all. Right now, if you are looking for some website designs, some reels, y'all need to hit me up. I will do that shit for you. I will update your website. This is Jezebel Thunders clean looking website at jezebelthunder.com y'all can check it out you can check out the website and the brand new reel that i just did for this amazing person uh it is pretty epic and i'm pretty proud of it i cried when i showed it to her um other than that though tonight i'm very excited about the very special guest that we have because not only do we have one of the first people that i met when i first started to get into the burlesque scene but we also have a uh legend in the making not in the making he's literally been a legend since like 1990 so uh i'm very excited to have both of them on today we're gonna play some games with them we're gonna get to know them uh other than that i do want to shout out really quick that if you like what you see with my stupidity and you want to see all the different kinds of things that i do uh starting monday i'm gonna be on only fans premiering four episodes of shows that I have been doing. So every Monday morning, if you join my OnlyFans, it's only $5 a month. You'll see a brand new episode of a different show that I've been doing. Monday is going to be Tease If You Please. And stick around because we have some special guests next week and I can't wait to announce who they're going to be. So come join me on OnlyFans. It's a good ass time. You won't see my dick, but you will have a good time. So I'm not sure that's the first time I probably said that, but it probably won't be the last. Uh, other than that... I'm very ready to get this fucking show started. Uh, this first performer actually is a multi-talented performer. I'm going to bring them on. She is technically our musical guest for the evening. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, she's from St. Louis. I believe she's still in St. Louis right now. But uh, she is an amazing... Oh, my God. You look beautiful. <laughs> I, I got, man, I miss that smile. Honey, I feel very underdressed. <laughs> well, listen, you no, nobody needs to be dressed. Maybe this is I just need to do a little. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, you are definitely coming exactly the way that you need to. I love you yeah. so much. Thank you for coming and joining us on the. <laughs> for having me. Uh, I'm very excited because, first of all, if y'all don't know who Frankie Duop is, because I didn't properly say your name, Frankie Duop is an amazing, amazing singer and songwriter. She has a plethora of jams. First of all, can I just talk for a motherfucking second about Rolling Round, your song? Yes. That, I smoke the fattest blunt. 
and vibe. That's your favorite? That's your I favorite? Vibe. That's so funny. But I, I love that, though. I, I vibe so hard to that song, song because I had seen your music video, uh, the Hard to Kill one, mm -hmm. but I hadn't heard Rolling Round because when I was looking at, like, research to, like, get to know y'all and, like, <laughs> what not to ask and know what to ask and know what's already been asked, I was kind of like, let me hear this. And when you were on the radio station, the radio station, 95.5, Okay. <laughs> She's on the that radio. That host was like vibing to that song. And honestly, I was like the right kind of stone. And I'm like, this is some like Jill Scott fucks Erica Badu meets a new like, like what was what, what's the girl I love? I used to love her first two albums. Uh, that same uh, trust and like love, Keisha Cole. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Keisha Cole. The throwbacks. First two <laughs> albums, Keisha Cole. Cole. First two albums, Keisha Cole. Like that is, I love your music so much. What bothers me is that you are like so slept on right now, right now in life. You, your so views, far. like so far, just for right now. That's why I really <laughs> wanted to like bring you on the show. And even though I don't have a massive <laughs> audience, I just wanted to put you out a little bit more because I love your music. I think it's so good. I vibe so hard <laughs> to it. What, uh, when we first met you and I, we were both doing burlesque. Yes. Oh, my God. I'll never forget that night, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you remember? Because actually, one of my favorite memories of you is uh, from this one time that I tried to do drag. And it, this is, you can't yes! see the picture. Yes, you got the picture. <laughs> you can't see the picture. You can see this one better. But this yes! one is me and Pink as Dina Cochina and Dina Frankie. Cochina. And Frankie acting like I'm a good drag queen. And I love it. That is called friendship. That is called support. Okay. You were that, right look, there. We see her. Remember how I did a nine minute number that night? <laughs> okay. But it was worth every minute. It was so lit. Liz, that's one of my favorite memories. And I know you from G's Louise, the one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to have you and be able to catch up with you because it's been a while. Uh, how did you, what made you think, or what kind of like took you out of the burlesque scene, if I may ask that? Um, getting pregnant. <laughs> yeah. You have a beautiful no, daughter? Then, yeah, she's six now. Um, uh -huh. So that feels, I mean, I feel like that was kind of still yesterday, but it really wasn't. It was almost 10 years ago now. Um, but yeah, no, I just didn't really feel the same after. Um, and music was always there. And so kind of naturally, I just, when I wasn't dancing anymore, that's what I gravitated into and it stuck, so. Because I will say this really quick, that if you ever have a song that you want me to get dance to, I would love to dance to your music. <laughs> I would love. I would love to figure yes. out something. Erica is in the chat, and she's saying, hey, prom dress. Is this your prom dress, or is she Yes, saying, that was my prom dress. Hey. <laughs> that oh. was my prom dress. Listen, Hi, uh, look, how, look how I made you this little graphic, and then I couldn't even play it because I was like, <laughs> trying to do too much. I was trying to do too much. Uh, today, I told you uh, I wanted you to come and join us as a musical guest because I did want you to um, show the world your talents because as a burlesque performer, you are amazing. But there's just something so captivating about a singer and like especially someone who like makes their own music mm -hmm. that like I am, I don't think the word envious, but it's more that I just really, really appreciate it and it's something that I know I can't do. So I'm just like in oh awe God. of, yeah. I'm in awe that you could do it and then I'm in awe that I like, that it's so quality like even your music videos quality <laughs> thank you look i strive for it it's hard and you you really have to fight for what it is that you want and it can slow the process up and that's something i've been dealing with lately but it's worth the fight it's worth the wait i'd rather keep waiting and get what i need you know oh absolutely especially like when i started burlesque do you, i mean to this day 10 years into it i still have to explain to people a male burlesque performer and I still know that it's like, if it feels good in your soul and your heart, you got to like go for it. And you kind of, as long as it don't hurt nobody, like right. as long as you are actually like trying to be the best that you can, it will eventually happen, which sucks. It's just the patience is what everyone has to right. do. Right, it's you. the patience. Cause you're like, yeah. but you know, you know, it just takes time and consistency. And I know you were saying that you uh, were kind of like, I mean, we all, a lot of artists are. I feel like I am too. I'm just trying different avenues. But right now with everything that's going on right now, it's kind of uh, hard to be motivated to create something that I guess not only other people expect you to do, but also you want to do. And even right. if you know something's right, you don't want to put anything out that's kind of not, 
what you want to represent you and you don't want to rush anything, which I really Thank admire. Because I'll rush. And well, and I kind of, you know, admittedly, I kind of done that with the first two singles, especially Rolling Round, because Rolling Round just happened spur of the moment in the studio. Like, yeah, I heard that. He, he made the beat, we wrote the song, and, I, you know, it was like, it was done. Um, so I knew that was more of like a demo situation, but you only get a debut album once. You know, yeah. so especially with like a video, you know, you only get to make that first impression one time. So I'm looking forward to the day when people go to my Apple Music and they got to scroll all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> to, get to get a couple albums. Listen, I bought everything that you have on iTunes. I will continue to support you in every way because your shit is like my vibe. Like I love oh the music gosh, that you've been putting you. on. I'm very excited to see what kind of influences you you have in like future projects. But do you have anything that you kind of feel like is influencing you currently, like in the last month, even if it's not actually creating like progress, it's just something that you find inspirational? Um, I have found myself back listening to jazz more heavy. Yeah. Um, which is great because that's kind of what made me want to be a singer anyway. I have jazz musicians in my family, and so I'd sing along to saxophones and, you know, the singers, too. And so it seems kind of natural for me to kind of slip back into that. And like you said, even if it's not directly showing up in what it is that I'm creating, it's it's helping me keep, like, things going and stay fresh and, like, hearing the music, really, you know? Yeah, because music is healing. It's healing. So you are <laughs> you are an essential worker when you are creating that shit because it is super... Like, it's just a vibe. And I know you just released a new single right now with your big brother, uh, Drew Franklin or Andrew Franklin? Yes, Drew. Both. Well, his name's Andrew, but everybody calls him Drew. All right. <laughs> so rest, rest in peace, Drew. Yes, rest in peace. Um, but thank thank you to him because he's left me pieces. Um, and that happened to be one of them. Um, and he teams up with an artist who does music and visual art. Uh, Damon Davis here in St. Louis, but he's he's like worldwide, he's great. Um, and put that together, that's probably like the most like really intimate song that I've like written and kind of tucked away. It was hard letting that one out and like putting that one out. And the song is called Forever in a Day. Mm -hmm. And it is, like I'm playing it a little bit right now. I got emotional. <laughs> And I think it, obviously I knew the background a little bit, so it's like mm -hmm. that put a lot more emotion in it. But it's just still such a like, I I guess my biggest thing with soul music and just like what you're kind of putting out right now, I am clearly a hyper person, yeah. so I'm very drawn to things that can calm me down. And music is definitely one of those things. Thanks. Thanks. And your and your music vibes me the fuck out. Like it definitely is like calms me down. It's such a high compliment. I say I love you. <laughs> it's true. And honestly, it's like selfishly, I would love for you to have an album, but at the Go, no. Why did Jeez Louise just FaceTime me right now? Because <laughs> she was calling me back. Uh, but honestly, I, I, I am very excited to see what you put out. But at the same time, I really appreciate the fact that you are willing to like craft it and make sure that it's good. Have you ever, uh, this is just something I'm, I was thinking about earlier today with your music. Are you uh, in the market to kind of like, cause TikTok, I hate saying it, but TikTok is kind of a really great source to like market your music. And it's like, you could throw a dance in there, make Jeezy do it. You Look, I really should see it do some kind of, I don't know, I feel like it's coming. It's coming. Because Hard to Kill is like kind of on that energy. Or maybe I just have to do the first one myself. Because <laughs> like, I was going to say, I'll know? do a dance. I know Jeezy will do. I'll make some other people do. We put a hashtag on that shit. Okay. And whatever song you want to put out, let us know. We will fucking throw that shit on TikTok. Look, Jeezy just joined the chat right now. And too. I need to because, you know, this COVID shit, it's a lot, you know, especially live shows and everything that was especially in producing that was majority of my income and uh i gotta get hit to this internet stuff <laughs> it's hard it's not impossible it's but it's definitely hard uh i would love for you to sing a little something for the people watching if that's okay and then maybe we can play a game afterwards sure i'm with that Fuck yeah, all right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, i'm gonna keep the comments off so that you could just enjoy the majestic songbird that is the incredible <laughs> Frankie Zua. Take it away. Okay, y'all, so give me some hearts, like if I'm sounding good, I'm gonna do this acapella and I hope I don't mess it up, but here we go. Okay. 
Where did you come from, baby? And who can you take me there right away? Won't you, baby? Tender on it, you got to be. Spark my nature, sugar fire with me. Cause don't you know now is the perfect time. We can make it right, hit the city lights. Then tonight mm, is the love and pain. Let me take you to the max. I want to love you, pretty young thing. You need some loving, tender loving care, and I'll take you there. I get so nervous, you guys. Oh my God. Because <laughs> I want to love you, Be pretty to young thing. You need some loving, um, tender see. loving care, and I'll take you there. Yes, I will. <laughs> yes. I can't wait to have you in Los Angeles. I can't wait until this is over. I can't wait to come out, okay? Listen, I I you are so captivating. We gotta play, we're gonna play a little fun game, a lighthearted game. All right. Yeah. We're not gonna do anything too crazy. I am gonna turn on the comments so if anybody wants to show some love. Uh also you got Vemo, right? Yeah, uh Vemo, which I'd have to I'd have to look at the thing. My cash app is like cash symbol Frankie DW. DW? Okay, I'm going to put that real quick. Frankie DW. Uh, because I'm going to play a game with you called uh, This or That. Okay. And basically, I'm just trying to get to know you. I just want to figure out... Look, I changed it. Uh, I just want to figure out... Also, really quick, I do want to say that in uh, the song Hard to Kill, you have a line that says, big mistake underestimating this. <laughs> yes, it is a big mistake for anybody underestimating my mm. queen. Uh <laughs> Somebody this or that, we're just... Out. It's okay. <laughs> uh, real quick, we're going to throw this out. Faith or religion? Faith, for sure. For sure. Uh, and then in the same vein of that. But let us know why. Why do you think? Why, what, what makes you pick faith over religion? Um, I've always been... like my Okay, so my mom left the Catholic Church as soon as she could, okay? She grew up in an Italian neighborhood in Wisconsin. And she was like, I'm out of here. So we just been raised on that. Um, yeah. But philosophy and spirituality and um, building those kind of those practices that work for you and um, build that direct connection, which religion also does, but in your own way, you know, not having it have to be so structured and you got to do this and that and there's all these rules like your own natural vibe. I love that. I mean, this, I feel like I know the answer to this, but I don't know you like that. So let me just let you keep for yourself. This is in the same vein. Would you rather wealth or love? Okay, so when we say wealth, are we talking only monetary? <laughs> yeah, when I'm talking about wealth, I'm talking about wealth to the extent of where you will never have to worry about money ever again. And you could probably oh, live your life alone. You could go up into some Tina Turner ass Europe country and bugging, just make music for yourself and let people hear it. But love won't be there. I know. And that's the thing. I hate, you know, like, it might make me sound however, but I choose love. Same. I you love know, that. That's music. Hey. That's love. That's life. That's everything. Like, I also have lived, what, 36, 36 years without wealth. So I feel like I'll okay. be fine without it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one. Here's another one for you. A shower or a bubble bath? Bubble bath. Bubble bath. Let me take a bubble, bubble bath. bath. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually a shower. I don't like sitting in there too long. I feel like if I'm going to be underwater, I need to be like in a pool. If I'm like dirty and I want to take the bath, I might shower before or after. But yeah. I love me a bubble bath and a soap yeah. after this too. Unless it's like a big, <laughs> big tub, like at my mom's house. Then I'll sit up in a bubble bath. Yeah. Okay. Uh, day or night? This one's a little bit obscure night yes i love that too. <laughs> i love like seven in the morning but i don't like when i have to do something seven in the morning right because like i've been up yes. yeah okay this one is uh the last one and then i'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of your day mm -hmm. erica badu or jill scott badu baby <laughs> <laughs> i was a trick question you should have picked either one I'm I, know, I thought you were gonna I be like to. you, you gonna make you know. me sure? Did you me, see? Badu is mother and Jill. That's Auntie Jill, you know. Yeah, but Badu actually, is mama. Like <laughs> that's the perfect way of explaining how uh, their characteristics are, especially to the yeah. community. Did you see their live stream? 
I did not. I could It's not. on. If you want to go on YouTube, you can watch it. Like the whole two hour. Like I, it's on there, and it is oh, wow, some I of the. It, I was like, it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, it was just them vibing, like singing with each other and just talking about shit. And it was so amazing. It was also very inspirational. So I feel like right now, that's my favorite thing about the internet. And the, the fact that everyone is able to create, whether they do or not, it's like, it's really amazing to be able to watch five shows in one night at the same time, you know? Right. Or, and I know that, like, I feel sometimes like, man, that means I should be stepping on my game. But I'm also like... I just need to create stuff and make sure that it comes with love and that right. some shit is going to stick to the wall and some of it is going to fall to the floor. But if it's, it's genuine, that. that's what really matters. Yeah. Do you have any uh, parting words you would like to say to the people watching you and getting to know you on this stream today? Um, check me out. I'm Frankie doo on everything. Um, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Instagram. I have Facebook, but like who, I don't use that for real. But who uses that? Um, <laughs> okay um i did release a single on the fifth it is called forever in a day please go check that out um it's an awesome song that i did with my brother who's no longer with us so give that some spins and check out my other singles rolling around and hard to kill as well. hard to kill i mean i can't pick a listen those three songs are a t-boss a left eye and a chili i can't pick which hey! one i love the most <laughs> i cannot pick which one i want the most but i love them all I love that, how you said that no, they are. And you know, and you know, Lisa is forever in a day. Like, you know, Lisa's okay. forever in a day. Uh, Frankie, <laughs> I love you. So, I love you so much. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your talent and your spirit with us. I can't wait to see you. Hit me up anytime you need something. And DM me your phone number because I ain't got that. Yeah, I'm going to do yeah. that. I'm going to send that to you if you don't send it to me first. Uh, yeah. Show some love. <laughs> put some hearts on the comments for uh, Frankie doo y'all. And show some love. I love you so much, my baby. I love you, too. Thank you Bye. for joining. Of course, thanks for having me. Of course, my queen. Oh, yes, y'all. Give it up one more time for Frankie doo That was such a lovely time. Oh, oh, my spirit is just fed. Like, it's just fed. I just feel all nom nom. I need a fork and a knife. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, y'all, I do want to say really quick, we do have a word from our sponsor before we bring our next uh guess on i actually recently just got aim to wash it is a bidet that the company sent to me and i cannot wait i literally got it right before this show started so i have not flushed my booty yet but uh aim to wash.com go check it out 69 dollars or 70 dollars don't even play with that shit uh and make sure you guys check them out why waste and why worry about toilet paper when you could just wash your power wash your ass you know what i'm saying too i don't think that is the I don't think that is the slogan for the company, but that is definitely what I'm saying about it. Also, our other sponsors, of course, are Ever After Creations with an extra S. If you're going to follow them on Instagram, they're specializing in creating personalized cups and clothing, and they now have masks. So make sure you go check out my beautiful little cousin and her incredible business, Ever After Creations, y'all. Yes! Sponsors! 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 I will definitely make a video and let y'all know how that the day uh, cleans my boot head, you know? No TP needed. No TP needed. We'll save some trees and we'll clean some booties. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm so ready for that. I'm more excited for that than I ever was for the squatty pot. But uh, all right, y'all. I'm very excited to bring on our next guest who is joining us. He is a child star off Broadway and Broadway legend. Please, y'all, spread your legs for Blake McIver, y'all. Hey! Hey! Look, I have theme music for you. I live. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, no problem at all. You are literally one of my, you know, new favoriteest people in the world. So Yay. I definitely well, likewise. I definitely had to have you on. How are you doing right now? Good. Hanging in. I, you know, I'm in Palm Springs. Can't complain. <laughs> Am I getting this Uber over to Palm Springs? <laughs> come on down i need to come join y'all i mean you're keeping pretty busy though uh you got a couple of things going on right now right yeah we do have a pr very where we call this quarantine studios uh my friend scott and phillips house that i'm staying at because we've got like five different live streams a week going on from from this location <laughs> yeah, you got like blake's musical happy hour is that exclusively on youtube uh, no, it's actually, it's streamed through uh, YouTube, Facebook Live, Periscope. You can find it on my Twitter. 
it's all over the place. So yeah, that's every Wednesday at three thirty. So real quick, uh, for those who don't know Blake, I did not research you as much as uh, I ever did before. I definitely <laughs> looked up old interviews. I mean, we all know you from Full House. We know you from Star Search. We know you from Little Rascals. Uh, I didn't know the journey of it. I didn't know. I knew that your mom is uh, pretty famous. She yeah. was a principal dancer for the Dean Martin show. And yep. Like all the legends, like Frank Sinatra and shit, she toured with. Yep. Your dad was also everybody. Your dad was also in the business, and then you basically were like, "I'm gonna be in this business too," and you have killed it. I've actually had a couple of requests of people telling me to uh, basically ask you to do Yankee Doodle, which we're not doing, uh, because I'm sure you get those requests every other day. I do, but you know what? I am on Cameo now, and I have been sending videos to people of L-O-V-E from Little Rascals and Yankee Doodle from Full House, and I'm more than happy to do it on Cameo. I just won't do it for free. But Hell no. <laughs> Hell no, don't do it for free. Are you kidding me? I actually was going to be like, man, I wish that... So also, uh, recently, one of your newest endeavors is uh, you are a male burlesque performer. Correct. Have you ever dabbled in burlesque before? You have done vaudeville obviously and you did choreograph but burlesque burlesque did you ever perform before last year never performed i choreographed uh the last tour that i did with a musical artist named ariana savalas from postmodern jukebox we did a burlesque themed tour uh with her and she actually got booked at both the new orleans burlesque festival and the new york burlesque festival so i was there at both festivals and kind of like teching and making sure everything worked. And what year was that? Uh, gosh, this was like three years ago now, I think. Oh we man, did, so you we probably did the circuit in the same year. So yeah, yeah, you definitely, you definitely probably saw all my friends at the New Orleans Burlesque Festival in New York. I'm Burlesque. sure I did. Oh, that is so gag worthy. I'm very excited. So Blake, your first burlesque performance was a tribute to Star Wars. Yes. It was, I mean, I'm so bad at Star Wars. <laughs> I'm so bad at Star Wars. It was not Anakin. I always want to say Anakin, but it was Luke Skywalker. Yeah, it was like, yeah. It was, oh, I just dropped you. I got excited. <laughs> Are you okay? It, that was the force. That's basically. That was the force. Are you all right? <laughs> uh, you're um, a huge Star Wars fan. Is I there anything? Huge, huge Star Wars nerd. See, because uh, the game that I want to play with you, in some of the interviews, you said you were a fanatic of something, so we definitely included that into uh -oh. that. Uh -oh. So that game is going to be super fun. We haven't played it before on the Tito Bonito show, but we're definitely going to do it with you because I feel like okay. it'll be so much fun. But we'll get to that in a second okay. because I'm definitely going to fuck with you a little bit on that. Uh, uh -oh. you, also, you also in 2014 put out your first uh, and currently only album, right? The Time in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I released a Christmas album when I was a kid, but we don't really count that one. <laughs> Wait, can I get that on iTunes? <laughs> no, but I'll send you a copy. My mom has a stack of them somewhere. <laughs> yes, I'm going to need to marry up my motherfucking Christmas this year. Wait, oh my God, I love that Christmas album. How many tracks are on that? Uh, it's like 10, 10 or 12, I think. That's a good amount of Christmas, Christmas jingles. <laughs> Look, everybody in the comments is like, oh my God, I want that album too. Uh, you also... But but yes, Sorry, the one you're play? talking about is technically the, the, the one and only. Yeah, look, Jeez Louise is one of my best friends who is uh, in love with Full House, so she loves this shit. Oh, I'm yeah. going to definitely uh, send her a copy of that album. You also, um, I was going to say that I would love to see a male burlesque act as Yankee Doodle, and I will pay all of the money for that whenever eventually it happens. I really do need to work that up. That's a really good, that's just good branding. But I like that... <laughs> I, I can't imagine anyone caring enough to ask me to do the same thing for 20 years, but I can imagine how I would take it because I'd probably be okay with it, but it would depend, you know? It's a weird thing. I mean, I've totally come to love it now, but I did go through a period in my adolescence where it was like, it was very difficult to be known for something that you don't feel like that person anymore. Yeah. Um, but now I love it and the nostalgia of it. I have that too, because like I watched the show before I was on it and loved it, so... Wait, are you going to be, are they not smart enough to put you in Fuller House right now? So on June 2nd, you have to tune in to part two of the final season because there's a very exciting cameo that I filmed last <laughs> fall. <laughs> yeah, it was last November. Yeah, they got me in. I'm literally in the last episode. I think I can say that. I'm pretty sure I can say that. Okay, well, you know what? We'll, we'll just won't save this uh, Instagram live. Uh, <laughs> 
That's so exciting. Holy so, yeah. shit. That's more exciting than if uh, fucking Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen were on it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if everyone would agree with you on that, but I was <laughs> very excited. It was really fun. I think it's amazing. I love that it's still on. I love that. That's the thing I think also, too, that I can understand as an adolescent being kind of like annoyed at being recognized for something like that. But in the future, I can see how since it's something that at the end of the day is just kind of projecting love, it's totally. really kind of nice to see and that. It's like, it does... If it makes people happy, like, absolutely. Yeah, like instead of something where it's like you're getting famous for like fighting someone, it's something that right. like, it's pretty amazing to like, be able to like still withstand this whole time, which is totally. fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> what else do uh, is there anything that you want to tell the people, the audience, anything that uh, other shows because I know you got some other shows right now. So plug that shit right now. All right, I do. I do have some other things. Uh, we're doing. Uh, the, I was on a show on the Bravo Network called The People's Couch uh, for four seasons, and uh, we've been doing live streams. The show got canceled, but we've been in this quarantine doing live streams because all three members of my couch, my boyfriend Emerson and our friend Scott, whose house we're at, um, we've Brilliant. been watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and The Real Housewives of New York. Wednesdays and Thursdays and doing it, setting it up just like our TV show used to be set up where with the camera faces us, we watch the television show and you're getting our live real time reactions to everything. And then we answer questions on the commercial breaks. It's super fun. Where, where can we see this? Uh, that, on is on, YouTube? that is on Scott's Facebook. So you can go to Scott Nevins and that, and we're all, but you can find it on mine too. It's all, we've all reposted our shit. <laughs> no, yeah, you're you're very good at social media, and I love that because I'm pretty sure that's. Uh, are you like your own marketing like agent or? I no, am. You got... and I, ha I had to learn it really quickly because the whole business changed between me working as a kid and coming back to it after college. It was literally the birth, the the online casting movement happened while I was in college not working, and so I came mm -hmm. back to show business having to learn an entirely new industry. Um, so Ooh. I got good at it pretty quick. Damn. Uh, I don't. I don't even want to mention this, but I also do just for the sake of doing it because yeah. I smoked the Red Bull this morning. How do you feel about Donald Trump being your dad in The Little Rascals? It's weird. <laughs> so, so it was a weird. So in the movie, obviously we're never on screen together because it's just right. over a cell phone call. But the day that we filmed that, he insisted upon having lunch with me because he wanted to like I don't know know who he was playing opposite or whatever and well, he so put he the was, name next to yeah he was married to marla Ma mables at the time tiffany was a baby and on set and we had this very odd my parents obviously were there we had this very odd lunch together at craft service catering and it was just so bizarre and then never saw him again <laughs> Oof. aren't you lucky <laughs> I completely forgot about that. And then I rewatched the movie recently because I loved it as a kid, but it's like, I just never, like, I don't watch the movie and being like, oh, I'm going to know that person or whatever. Right. And there were just... so many cameos in that movie. Yeah. And you were definitely one of those kids that was like, so beyond polished. Because especially me as an actor growing up, pretending that I was going to be an actor, I learned that I was a comedian and not an actor and not a singer. And when I do comedy, it's really good. But it's like, that's one of those things that I think as a kid too, you, Taj, uh, like a couple other like kid stars were just like so multi-talented that it always was like, man, I want to be this motherfucker. But at the same time, <laughs> it's so cool to know that like, not only are you talented, but you're also humble, you're hardworking. Uh, and you also like, are never a bad time. I never hear you talk shit about nobody. I never <laughs> see you do anything other than your job and that is so inspiring it really motivates me to try to be like the shit there's not enough time that you know I, there's not enough time to be shady about people you know this in this industry and in every i do believe every industry is equal in the sense of like having people that don't appreciate how lucky they are to be doing something that they love so i can see how different things happen where it jades people especially in la yeah. so i always when people are actually like dope and you know everyone goes through some shit so it's of like course. when you know you we never see someone complaining it's really like humbling and it feels very midwestern it feels very like very like not what people think of la of la yeah, yeah, yeah well and it's always i feel like la natives we always get a bad rap because it's sort of people think that the la culture is not what it really is like i you know i i'm always telling people 
No, the culture that I grew up in was taco trucks and, you know, a melting pot and show business. It was not this weird sort of like Pilates, green juice, <laughs> yoga. It's, and it's so many people coming in from a different, like, including myself, like, I'm not from here, but there's so many different people coming in that the fact that, like, I do think that it's really hard to keep a city with so many different influences, like, have, a, have it be a positive like outcome to people that don't because so many people that talk shit about LA when I heard them talk about it because I've lived here for eight years and every time they bitch about it I'm like I could list some shit that sucks about your city like right. and there's and to me mountains and beaches there ain't a lot of places that have that shit you, you can't argue so I love LA and it's only gotten better every fucking year so I'm always ready to fight somebody even though I'm not from here I can't rep it I still feel like I need to. Yeah, but you can. I mean, you're you're in it now. Eight years, you're you're in it. You're in it oh, in now. It. No, no, I'm fucking in that shit now. Uh, Blake McIver, do you want to play a game? Absolutely. This one's very fucking weird. We're gonna play oh, a God. game I'm of scared. fuck, marry, oh. and kill. Okay. All right. Uh, there are gonna be three people that you're gonna see on this. We're not excluding genders. Right. Um, I'm basically just gonna throw you out and you're gonna not only tell me who you're gonna fuck, marry, and kill, but I also want you to explain why you why? fuck, marry, and kill these people, okay? And then if all you right. want my opinion, you can ask it, but you don't have to, all right? <laughs> this okay, one is, this is during my research, I found out that you were a huge fanatic of this and it's not Star Wars. Uh, so we're gonna go with Back to the Future. We got George McFly, Biff, and we got Marty McFly. Who would you fuck, marry, and kill? Okay, I would fuck Biff because that'd be hot. <laughs> you gotta fuck the bully, right? Um, I think I'd have to kill George because bless his heart, he's so annoying and marry Marty. I love that. Oh my God. Well, wait, see, I feel like I don't know if I would fuck Biff or let Biff fuck me, but I guess that's- Oh, the... well, either. I mean, you know, I, like we love a verse queen, so equal <laughs> opportunity. I mean, it'd be hot either way, so. <laughs> I bet, I bet Biff's spit tastes very nice. Um. <laughs> Okay, here's our next. This one is one of my favorite trios of all time. I call them the TLC of uh, TV sitcoms. Yes. So we're going to get you a Screech, a Zach Morris, and an AC Slater. Oh, my God. I cropped this real fucked up. <laughs> it's all right. I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. I think I'd have to marry Zach. Mm, you better not lie. Um, fuck AC, of course. I mean, of course. That singlet, like, that is burned into my mind. So sorry, Screech, you're on the chopping block. <laughs> I would pay money to anyone who would not kill Screech. Right. And even though Zach was kind of an asshole, especially watching some of these episodes, I'm like, wow, this is... I watched an episode recently where AC realized, first of all, that's problematic enough that AC realized that he was Hispanic in the college years. I mean... But, <laughs> but I remember Zach being like, who gives a fuck? And I was like... Wow, things haven't changed. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go a political round with this okay. next one. Uh, so, would you fuck, marry, and kill Hillary, Obama, and Bernie? Oh, what is this cropping? I think okay. Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. I like I like all three of them for different reasons. Okay. Um, I think I would have to marry Hillary because I just feel like that home life would be so stable that upstate New York just like just posh existence. I would have to fuck Obama. And so sorry, Bernie. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the first one I haven't agreed with. I would okay, definitely so what would you Obama. Do? You don't think Mary Obama would hook it up? Oh, he would. He told me. And there's no infidelity in the Obamas that I no, know. No, none whatsoever. But Hillary wasn't the one that fucked up. This no. one is this one is a spider verse round. I, oh. I hate that I cropped it this way because I was figuring out how to do all of this. Toby McGuire, Andrew Garfield, or what's the new one? Tom, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Who I would definitely want to fuck. <laughs> yes. Have you seen that booty in those tights? Listen, I've seen all of them. And even though I remember Andrew Toby, I was like, he's only hot when he started like being like, what the fuck are these muscles? Right. Then Andrew was always hot. It's just always the movie hot. sucked. Always hot. And then Tom is like one of those that I've heard like some weird shit, but I'm also like, eh, y'all don't know him, but I would let him spit in my face. For sure. Yeah. So it's Tom, Tom gets the, gets the fuck. Uh, Tom Holland gets the fuck. Uh, ooh, I think Andrew Garfield gets the Mary cause he's British and that's just lovely. And yeah, so Toby, sorry, Toby, you gotta yeah. go. And also Toby was irritating in Great Gatsby. So I don't feel so bad. <laughs> 
listen, I want to like Toby, but he is a poor man's Eric Foreman from that 70s show. Uh, oh, okay. That, I totally see That's that. why when, when Venom and it was to, uh, Topher Grace, I was like, they are playing the fact that they are literally the same actor, right? Oh, yeah, totally. We got two more. This one is a cartoon round, so it's a little fucked up. But what I did was I switched it up and I made, or I put live uh, drawings of these characters. So we have oh, Prince yeah. Eric. Ugh. That's Prince Charming, uh -huh. and then Prince Adam, Beauty and the Beast. Who okay. would you fuck, Marion and kill? Okay, fuck Prince Eric in a heartbeat. Yes. Oh. Um, Mary Adam, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, which, I, it's so funny, because like I'm always like, oh, I'm, I'm so the Beast personality, maybe. so do I want to marry myself? Am I that much of a narcissist? Maybe. Um, and then, yeah, I'd have to... Charming, Charming has zero appeal to me. Uh, the only version of Charming that had appealed to me was Richard Madden in the live action. He, mm. had that big, he had that big old bulge in those white pants and I was like, sir. <laughs> Not sir. Woof. <laughs> sir. This, this one is the final one and I hate that it's ending already, but you know, ah. we, can't, we can't do this all day. This one is going to be a good one. If you would fuck, marry and kill these three, please explain why. We got Uncle Jesse, Uncle Joey, and Danny Tanner. Who would you <laughs> oh. Oh, this is so hard. Oh, I bet. No. I bet. I bet it's that hard. <sighs> All right. You got, you know, you got to fuck Uncle Jesse because, like, he the hot one. He the hot one. Um, I think I would have to marry Danny Tanner and kill Uncle Joey, which I hate because I love Dave so much. Cut it oh, out. That's so that's bad. So I'm definitely sending this to them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, it's the puppet thing. I don't like puppets. You don't like men shoving their hands up the rear ends of smaller... That made it sound different than what actually it was. That really did. That was going in a direction. I knew what you meant. Somebody was like, Uncle Joey looks like he'd be a freak. I actually uh, almost agree. I think I would actually marry Uncle Jesse because I just feel like anyone who marries Danny kind of has, you know, some bad vibes with them. Like, they don't really well, make it in life. So, and you're always gonna be chasing the the dead wife ghost. <laughs> I mean, what did happen to Vicky? Vicky was making an appearance in that for a minute. She was, and she comes back. Bitch, and not this another explosive. explosive. <laughs> and I didn't know. I was so surprised because I because I filmed my stuff on a different day, and so when I came to the last day taping for the final curtain call kind of bow thing that they did for the studio audience, she was there, and she was like. What are you doing here? I was like, what are you doing here? Oh my God, that's so wonderful. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah, we definitely love us and Vicky. Uh, God, I hope they don't just bring her back and she's like, I'm actually super happy and <laughs> I never needed Danny. Fucking bullshit. Um, yeah, that was amazing. That was an episode. That was the fuck, marry, and kill. I was going to play Name That Stripper with you, but I wanted to switch it up, you know? I, that was, that was, that was surprisingly difficult. <laughs> Usually I feel like fuck, Mary kill. I'm just like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> that I will was say tough. that there is actually no uh, way that you can actually fail at fuck, Mary and kill, which is really nice. Unless you pick Screech to marry, and then definitely I would have cut you off. Like Out. I just would have. I would have just been, bye broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blake McIver, where uh, can the people see you other than Blake's musical happy hour, the people's yes. couch? Uh, you also have another couple ones, right? Um, I've got a few things coming up. I've got, uh, I, one thing I can't say that is I'm going to be able to announce on Monday. I've got a very exciting thing coming out on Monday. Um, so check my socials. It's everything is at Blake McIver. Look, um, has, right there. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. You can find me across all the socials there. And yeah, stay tuned for something really cool on Monday. <laughs> I wish I could not be so vague about. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's different. It's different if you have to be like, uh, I can't wait to release what I'm about to release on Monday. And then you come on Monday and it's like a lip sync video. Right. No, this is not that. I'm excited. Ooh. <laughs> You can just text me what it is and I'll promise not to tell anybody. I will, I will. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, any words of wisdom for the people? Anything that uh, is helping you kind of navigate through, uh, especially since you're able to create so much right now, what kind of like motivates you to do so when you could probably just sit, chill and hang out by the pool? 
Well, it's it's a it's a balance for me. So it's I, I do I, I am doing a lot of work right now, which is great. And I'm thrilled about it. But I do have to take a lot of time where it just no judgment and just pour that wine and have hours to myself so that I don't lose my mind. So whatever that version is for you or for anybody like I just feel like I feel like there's a lot of pressure right now because people are seeing everybody online like accomplishing so much and like here are my 17 workouts a day and here I made this smoothie and then I cooked this seven course meal and I'm like everyone needs to just chill out a little bit and not judge themselves because not everybody can do that every single day and that's totally okay um, and I think just remembering that and also remembering that like Social media is still a snapshot, even in quarantine, it's still a snapshot of the best moments of everyone's life. It's not like that 24 seven. So just reminding myself of that and yet still finding the space to create has kept me sane. I love that. That's so fucking true too. Cause especially there's so many people that are putting like a facade and then it's like, you don't, and, and, and it's so easy to be like, for lack of a better word, jealous of other people's accomplishments. When if you really knew what some people were going through, you wouldn't even want them. So it's like yeah. really important to just kind of focus on yourself and make sure that like you're as mentally good to like create and do whatever you need to do in your life. And sometimes the accomplishment is you put your nighttime sweatpants away and put your daytime sweatpants on. Listen, I'm actually completely naked from the waist down. Yes! So I'm definitely doing the least right now. <laughs> The and least. I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad at it because it looks like I'm doing the most. I mean, uh, it, you look fabulous. Thank you, thank you, Daddy. I can't wait to be able to hug you and see you in person and do another Likewise. fucking show. Yes. Um, you were the shit. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. And uh, Absolutely. you for having me. Ah. Anytime. You are the shit. I love you so much, and love I will you see too. you soon. Yes. Can't see wait you to very soon. can't wait to find out what happens on Monday. And thanks for those yes. uh, sneak peeks. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, my love. Absolutely. Bye, love. Oh, I love that motherfucker. Oh, Blake McIver. Yeah, that was so good. I love that fucking soul. That is a good Los Angeles motherfucking soul. Um, he's done amazing burlesque acts. He did a Hercules one that was the shit. Whew. All right, Sean. Well, you know what? I will say that since this is, we're coming close to the end, I will shout out the fact that I am putting on an all Cuban variety review. It's called Tropicana Gigante. Tropicana Gigante. And it's going to be on May 27th at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And it features an all Cuban cast of some of the best people that I know. We got Bad Poppy doing some drag king shit for you. We got Sofia Luna doing some burlesque. We got Carla Croqueta doing some drag. She is the face of Miami. And we also got Patrick giving you some comedy. And America's Got Talent, Yoli Mayor is going to grace us with the power vocals that she has, y'all. I am so fucking... I am so fucking ready for that shit, y'all. Uh, so come back and join us. We also have the Pansy Craze Peep Show this Sunday featuring Jezebel Thunder and a slew of other incredible performers. But um, y'all, that has been another edition of the Tito Bonito Show. I hope you all had a good ass time. Uh, remember to next week, are, do you all ready to find out who our special guests are next week, y'all? Because I'm, now some people are leaving and now they're not gonna know. Next week, we have boy lesk icon, Mr. Gorgeous, joining us. One of my biggest inspirations in burlesque, joining us. I can't even believe it. And we also have acclaimed producer extraordinaire, Donna Hood of Tease, if you please, joining us. Holy shit, y'all. Next week, Gorgeous and Donna Hood. I'm not fucking ready for it. But please come back. We're here every Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. We are the Tito Bonito Show. Be kind to each other, but most of all, yo damn self. All right, y'all? I love you. Make good choices. I worry about y'all. That's it. If you liked what you saw today, Venmo, Cash App, Tito Bonito, PayPal me. Send me some shit. And if you send some shit and put a memo for the special guests, I'll send the tips their way, y'all. That's it. Thank you for joining us. We love you. Thanks, Bob. He is a sweet person, Jeezy. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Stop it. Look at him.
Look how cute he was. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Bye, y'all. Make a choices. I worry.